Should we get started, Isabel? Yes, go ahead, Professor. I do. Um, I see that in your list. Uh, I'm assuming that the video on, so some that the video off. I'm trying to see. Uh, why don't I see them? Do I have the wrong screen? Oh, you can't see the attendance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, info session. My name is Francesco Borrelli. I am the vice chair for uh, the MNG program. Um, uh, today we have roughly one hour ago, I'm going to tell you about the program. We have uh, three faculty, uh, Professor uh, Gashi Lambert, Professor Gomez and Professor Lin. We're gonna tell them about their uh, um, area of concentration and some examples of Capstone's project. Uh, um, uh, Isabel Blanco is gonna, uh, is an amazing resource for the MH program. She manages the whole program and you will be in contact with her. Uh, she's gonna tell you about the degree requirements. And uh, then we, we are gonna uh, we are gonna have a Q and A session in the last 10, 15 minutes. I already see a Q and A. Uh, is that okay? There is an anonymous. Uh, uh, if you can switch, okay. Can I switch my concentration? We are gonna uh, should we move? Uh, Isabel, maybe we'll answer yes. this, but we'll uh, uh, let's wait for uh, to uh, to the Q and A session for asking uh, okay. questions. Yes. Should we answer this question since it seems to be. Uh, um, I can answer them. Yes. Yeah. You're going to do that in the Q&A uh, session? Uh, yes, I'll go over this um, question during the, the Q&A. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, let's get started. Let me share my set of slides. Uh, share screen. Okay. And... Okay, uh, I'm assuming you see my, uh, you see which which setting you see, do you see the one with the, you see a single slide, uh, Isabel? And I see the next slide also. Yeah, you, we see presenter right now. You see the presenter mode, okay, so that's not good. Display setting, uh, what about this one? Yes. One okay, slide. great. Uh, so as I say, let me give you an introduction. Uh, we don't have Professor Lin yet, but, uh, 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 and Gomez, you can start after the concentration area. So welcome to everybody. I have just five slides that they introduce you to the campus and to the UC Berkeley, in case you're not familiar with our university. It's an old university for US standards, uh, 1868, uh, when the government decided that, we should, that California should have a public university. Uh, a top public university that should serve equally the children of immigrants, the settlers, and the landowners, the industrial parents. And so that's this idea that was in 1868, it now became a reality. UC Berkeley is the top public university in the United States. Uh, we have an excellence which we are award, uh, which can be measured by number of Nobel Prizes, number of active program by all the rankings. I'm gonna show you some of the rankings, although they change every year. So if I were you, I would not focus a lot on, you know, is it today, is it Berkeley number one or number two, but more on the, the type of activities and the program that UC Berkeley offers. Uh, and so here, just as a note here, if you, uh, if you take one of my class, uh, sometimes we, uh, we we work in the chemistry department. We I teach also in the chemistry department, and you will probably uh, meet Jennifer Dodnais. And if you don't know her, Google her name and Netflix. You're gonna see all the history about DNA uh, sequencing and CRISPR. And so, very interesting story. And uh, very proud of her uh, as our as one of our colleagues. You, we have two. The you're gonna study on campus. You see Berkeley campus. There are other two uh, research facilities. One is a Richmond field station, for instance, some Capstone's project. These are uh, 10 minutes from our campus. And some of the Capstone project experiments happens at Richmond field station. It's a large facility uh, uh, next to the water. Um, and uh, there are, there's also a big collaboration with the, one of the uh, national labs, which is actually in the hills of Berkeley, called Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Uh, as, as I said, we are, uh, you know, we are proud of our ranking, especially given that we are a um, public university. Uh, number three, uh, uh, in the United States, if you think of all the areas, 
sometimes depending on the type of ranking, you know, it, uh, we Forbes, for instance, uh, two years ago and last year said that UC Berkeley was the top public university in, uh, uh, in the US and in the world. Um, what's around us, you know, it's in the, in, within 40 miles, you basically have uh, Silicon Valley right in this corner. So if you have, uh, you probably don't see, let me see if I can get a, um, a pointer. Yeah, it is. Um, you're, you have here, uh, Facebook is, uh, Facebook is here. Stanford is in this area, all Google is around this area. So top companies uh, uh, in Silicon Valley are within 20, 40 miles of uh, where you study. You have San Francisco in front. Uh, if you live in the hills, you're gonna see uh, San Francisco with all the traction in San Francisco. Napa Valley is close by, uh, East Bay and all the beautiful hills for a hike. And, you know, uh, don't forget that you can, you. We'll study hard, but also you will have time to enjoy one of the most beautiful places in uh, the United States. Uh, you, you will have the uh, Tahoe, which is a beautiful lake, uh, very full of snow. If you ski this period, Yosemite, uh, wonderful hikes, uh, Burning Man as well, if you are interested in art uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, California culture. So uh, let's go uh, to the MH program. It's, we are very proud uh, and of this program. This is a one-year program and uh, we are, mechanical engineering is one of the top uh, uh, department with the highest degree, uh, of the, the highest enrolled in this program. So the, the, the Isabel is gonna go through the degree requirements, uh, but a very high level, uh, you will, you're going to have a one, uh, eight unit of core leadership. Okay, so there are three pillars. A core leadership curriculum, which is uh, uh, at a eight unit uh, pillar. There is a capstone project, which is a five unit pillar, which is two semester long. And then there is the third pillar is your really the list of technical specialty courses for 12 units that you will take during your two semester UC Berkeley. Isabel will, will again, will describe the whole technical details what I want to do you what I want to do today is actually go through uh, or each one go through a little bit of a capstone project description and a technical uh, speciality what I'll do I'll do this by with that for my colleagues uh, of course we, we don't have a lot of time um, let me uh, because I'm presenting this I want to get rid of the pointer again. There was actually going forward. Um, with that, with my colleagues, I'm going to introduce you to different uh, concentration areas. Uh, uh, but really, the two uh, um, choices you have to make is really which area, if you are in ME, which special, which area of concentration you are interested in, and which capstone you want to work with. Okay, and so. Uh, capstone project is really one of our pillar, and if we have time, I'm going to tell you, give you, uh, tell you more, do a deep dive on capstone project. We have around 29 ME uh, project last year with from 15 supervisor. Each project is around three to five students. If you work with me, for instance, I do a lot of autonomous vehicle projects, and they're very popular because we really merge the mechanical side with the modeling simulation AI part of it. And usually there are around 40 non-mechanical engineering students that take ME Capstone project. We have a long list of uh, projects here. I actually checked this updated. And if you have time, please go on this link. We are gonna share the slides for looking at all the different projects. Uh, we have um, uh, nine concentration areas, advanced energy technology, a new area in aerospace engineering, biomechanics, control of robotics and autonomous systems, fluid in ocean, MEMS and nano, mechanics and uh, dynamics, modeling and simulation of advanced manufacturing processes and product design. As I said before, if we take 10 minutes on each one of these, we'll, uh, we'll run out of time. So there are uh, three faculties here today. They're gonna tell about their area of concentration. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, very quickly go through the areas of concentrations. So um, uh, we have Professor Lee, Professor Gashi Lambert, Professor Gomez, and also for being respectful of your time, uh, Liwei, Kosslein, and Gabriel, after your presentation, you can 
uh, you can leave uh, so that uh, and uh, uh, Isabel and I can continue and we'll be started. So um, I don't know, Professor Lin, maybe you want to start uh, about your yes, contribution. Yes, so I you want to share, or uh, you can also uh, talk up to the students. Uh, and you're muted, Liwei. Sorry. So so let me share my slide yes, quickly. Let me start yes. sharing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm representing the MEMS nano area, and I just want to show you one of the projects we did uh, in the earlier years. So the MEMS nano area, a lot of the things we are doing are sensors, and a lot of the MH project we're doing application, more like a product design. So showing in this particular slide is actually, uh, I guess, a capstone project student did two years ago. And this is an ultrasonic sensor module for smart appliance. And this project was sponsored by a company called uh, Meidi, actually in, uh, in China. I think it's the, one of the largest appliance companies. So what they are interested in doing this particular project is using a MEM sensor to sense the uh, auto water filling system. So once you put your water filling system in this refrigerator, uh, when you hit the button, so the water will be filled up and they want the sensor to automatically sense the level of the water and stop it automatically. I think currently a lot of uh, this uh, refrigerator you have to watch and then make sure the water is in the right level, then you stop it. So this is what one year student did in this capstone project. So if you join this MNG program, you will form a team similar to this. So this is a four student team. Uh, they work one year and to show the prototype. So for example, they make the prototype like this on the left side and the right side is actually the sensor we developed uh, by our research team. Okay, and the MNG team is actually using this sensor to do the thing. And they can also buy off the shelf ultrasonic transducer. So, in this particular one, we're using ultrasound transducer to do it. So you can see on the left, uh, over one year, the student actually make a prototype, uh, put the cup uh, into the simulation kind of a device. And they went through all the procedure, for example, estimating what kind of a cup uh, one may put in and what kind of a water level and what the time is required. And they developed the algorithm, uh, the real time uh, high detection uh, in order to detect the high by these ultrasonic transducers. And they also do the volume, I guess, uh, pre uh, computation and has some very simple mathematics going through and has this uh, being experienced uh, during their prototype work. So this, this is different selection pros and cons and different things. And Pretty much that's a simple project. And at the end of the project, they actually also try to use the chip we made by the research team to do the same thing. And you can see this evaluation, the performance of uh, this particular uh, ultrasonic transducers uh, in this particular fashion. So this is more like putting my research result into a commercial practical product. And this is actually the ultrasound testing result. When you send ultrasound and when you hit the water surface, you can see a big, I would say, echo coming back. That, that's how and why you know uh, what, where is the water level uh, showing like this. And at the end of the project, they actually did a presentation. Uh, I should say they did several presentations over the project time with the sponsor and also future work. So that's a very short presentation about the, a possible project uh, that you may be doing as a capstone. And that would be my very short presentation. Thank you, Professor Lin. Thank you, Lua. Um, I guess it's, we're not taking questions because it's, uh, we have, um, we'll leave that to Q&A. Uh, feel free, Professor Lin, to leave uh, the session because we, I know you're, you're busy. Uh, Thank you. Let's, yeah, uh, uh, Professor Goshe Lambert, uh, maybe you go next. Yes, okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, does that display all right? Uh, I don't see yet. Not, you don't see? No. No. Okay. Okay. 
How about there? Now it's good. Perfect. All right. Uh, great. So yeah, I wanted to give a quick overview of the uh, product design area. Uh, and I thought it'd be nice to also give a, a quick intro to one of the uh, courses that is offered through the product design area as well. So um, as a quick overview, the product design program and MN is, you know, the goal is really to introduce everyone to the foundational, both technical skills, but also the integrated design uh, methodologies to develop cutting edge products, services, and systems. So it's quite broad and it's a really exciting area. Um, there's really nice spaces through the College of Engineering and Mechanical Engineering Department uh, to, to make and create. So as an MN student, you'll have access to the uh, Mechanical Engineering Shop in Echeverry Hall, as well as the Jacobs Hall Makerspace, uh, the Citrus Invention Lab, and many more. So these are just a quick sampling of some of the uh, the different spaces that you have to fabricate different designs and work with professional staff uh, on, diff on a variety of projects. So one of the core classes in the product design area is a class that I teach on human-centered design methods. So this is a course that we run with about 70 students per semester. Uh, everybody works in an integrated team of about four or five students, where we go through a complete design process, beginning with identifying opportunities, uh, doing in-depth user research with, with stakeholders and customers, uh, going through um, and then uh, generating concept solutions, and then eventually bringing that concept to life through interactive prototypes and devices. So it's a really high speed class. Uh, a lot of teams can either uh, work with industry sponsors that we set up through the class, um, kind of similar to an undergraduate capstone type course. Uh, in fact, some teams also work on portions of their capstone project through this class as well. So there's a lot of options here on, on how to structure that. Um, you know, for this class, we close the semester. So this is an example of the uh, end of semester showcase that we have at the Jacobs Hall. Um, with one of the teams that actually um, had a device on campus that was assisting with uh, uh, reducing the um, food waste consumption on, on campus. And so uh, lots of projects. I even have a link on the top here to uh, a Behance website that you, know, you can browse uh, past uh, projects from the class. Okay, and in addition, I also just wanted to give a really quick snapshot of what a uh, capstone project might look like in the product design area. So um, over the years, I've hosted a variety of capstone projects, sometimes just with my lab, uh, sometimes with industry partners. Uh, one kind of popular area of capstone projects that I've personally hosted in the past has been with Autodesk Research. Uh, and this one from a couple of years ago was really looking to explore the integration of computational tools within uh, engineering design workflows. So Autodesk was quite interested uh, in understanding their generative design processes. So these are computer algorithms that can help uh, you know, create you know, thousands and thousands of, de of designs based on a set of constraints. Uh, they wanted to understand how people utilize these algorithms uh, and to create better knowledge systems to support uh, integration in practice. So there's a ton of questions here. I think we've run about five different capstone projects on various aspects, and you can start to understand and just from these figures get a sense for uh, the complexity of the type of information that we might want to glean. So uh, given a breakdown of some of the different CAD models that they have, we can understand different part relationships and dependencies and using machine learning and artificial intelligence start to answer some really interesting questions. So I know I just have a minute here and it's hard to get a full view, um, but I'd be happy to follow up with anyone through uh, either Q&A in the chat briefly, or if you wanna email me offline, that's fine as well. Uh, so my contact information is shown here on the right hand side of the slide. Um, and for this next upcoming year, uh, I personally have quite a few capstone projects that we're gonna run. Uh, one of them related to um, augmented reality and virtual reality to support uh, design reviews within distributed teams. Another one, again, with Autodesk looking at generative design systems. 
And then another one with Autodesk as well, looking at uh, sustainable design processes. So uh, lots of exciting stuff in the product design area. Uh, it's usually a really exciting and vibrant uh, community. And I think one of the largest groups that we have in the uh, ME department for uh, MEng. So uh, that's all I had to share today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bozo. Um, again, uh, Professor Garcia Lambert is busy, but he will share the slides. So you're welcome to leave. Uh, we don't have uh, time for Q&A. There will be another uh, session tomorrow, an in-person session. I know that many people will not be able to attend, but we're going to take technical uh, questions on uh, capstones and on uh, um, uh, on area of concentrations. Uh, thank you so much, Kosa. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Uh, Professor Gomez, uh, you're going to tell us about uh, control and robotics and some capstone example. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Okay, great. Well, that was a really nice presentation by Kosa. And I'm very excited for um, all of you students who are uh, joining this program, uh, just watching these uh, uh, projects on offer, I feel like I'd like to do some of this. So, so um, you're in a great place. Uh, I'm going to just, well, my name is Gabriel Gomez. Uh, I, this is my office here, 5116 at Chaveri Hall and my email. Um, if you have questions later on, you can feel free to uh, drop in or send me an email either way. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a few projects and I'm gonna try to make it quick uh, because I know we want to ask questions, but uh, I've, I've split them here into sort of three types. Uh, these projects here are ones that I supervise personally and there are three of them. Uh, then this second group of projects, this is a sample of our industry led projects. And uh, then this third group is projects that are coming out of UCSF uh, that have a research flavor to them. So I'll go quickly over uh, some of them. Um, these are projects that I will be offering and that uh, I lead personally. And if you join one of these projects, then you will meet with me every week and in, in person. And we uh, develop uh, tasks and, and go over uh, accomplishments over the week. So the first one, AI for traffic, uh, this is, if you're interested in the topic of the concentration of simulation or of, of robotics, or if you're into AI or anything like that, uh, we use open source uh, traffic simulation models to create small or large scale models of uh, city networks uh, for, for vehicular traffic. And then we use different techniques uh, to, to control the traffic. So this is a good opportunity for you to uh, learn about uh, techniques in artificial intelligence, such as reinforcement learning, and apply them to a real system with real data. Uh, the second one, control a, rob a jet bot. This is, I would say, it's more of a DIY type uh, um, building your uh, skills in robotics. We use this little uh, system called the JetBot that has an NVIDIA chip on it. And uh, we attach, as you see here, various different peripherals to it. We have a, uh, some cameras and uh, we can have overhead cameras and, and we build a little sort of portable lab uh, and and you do different, you design different experiments and, and work on that. It's, a, it's super fun and also an opportunity to uh, test the different skills that you would learn in a course such as would teach Professor Borelli. Uh, the last one, the machine learning workshop is one where uh, it's, it's a little more informal and it's an opportunity to learn about machine learning as a group. Uh, so I teach a class called Statistics and Data Science for Engineers. Uh, that is E, uh, no, I'm sorry, for M it's ME292B. And in that class, we learn a lot about statistics and uh, techniques in machine learning. And there's a final project in that class where you 
have to do some sort of data science project using uh, open source data, such as from Kaggle or data.gov or the UCI machine learning repository. So if you're interested in these topics, we spend the whole year learning about them. And, and lately we've been talking a lot about all of the exciting news that has been uh, coming out about uh, machine learning. Uh, these are four projects that are led by industry. Uh, and with, with all of these, well, uh, with three of these at least, we have a long history of them proposing uh, capstone projects and these projects being super fun and super successful. So Blue Goji is a company that it, I'd say it lives in the intersection between virtual reality and healthcare. So they are designing, uh, um, for example, a, uh, a virtual reality treadmill that uh, you get on and you can walk in either direction, not like a normal treadmill that you can only walk forward, but we are building this here on, on campus and we will continue to develop this. And the idea here is that, uh, for example, if you're recovering from some sort of an operation or you, uh, you're a senior and you um, need to do some uh, regular exercise, this coupling of virtual reality and healthcare uh, is, is um, what we're trying to target. <clears throat> Evolution Devices is a really uh, exciting and fantastic startup here in the Bay Area. And they are developing a device uh, to help people with uh, the, the problem of so-called foot drop. Foot drop is when you have issues with your uh, with with the muscles that control your feet uh, so that you tend to drag one foot as you as you walk. And this device is uh, sending well-timed uh, um, uh, electric signals to the muscles that get trained as you walk so that they improve your gait. And, and it's a really uh, neat technology that um, you uh, that you could be a part of developing. Zendar, they are also a, uh, a local startup um, and they are targeting the development of a radar system for autonomous vehicles to compete with the very expensive uh, uh, option of a LIDAR. So LIDAR, as you know, is a um, laser detector that creates a 3D sort of uh, vision of the, of the environment um, radar, if it could do the same thing, would completely blow LiDAR out, out of the water because it is much more cheap. So uh, we've been working with Zendar for, for a few years now. Um, third pack is the, the new kid on the block here. Uh, they are developing this device that is uh, for contrast therapy. So contrast therapy is a hot cold therapy. Um, which helps for muscle soreness and, and uh, recovery from surgery because it increases blood flow to targeted uh, areas of the skin. Um, so uh, I, I just want to mention also that all four of these companies have uh, hired or have been founded by uh, students from the MNG program. So uh, they, they're, they are very committed and engaged with this program. On the uh, UCSF side, well, unfortunately, I got a, a, an email from David last night saying that he's not going to be able to participate because he's going to be doing his medical residency next year. So, uh, well, thank you very much, David. Um, but uh, Amanda Paulson, uh, she works with the Atom Lab. And uh, what they do, uh, well, this is large scale, scale computation directed at drug discovery. So think of something like the problem of protein folding uh, and, and what you can do with large scale machine learning there. She is at the center of that. Uh, Mad Madhumita Sushil uh, is a real expert in uh, natural language programming, which is the branch of 
machine learning that uh, focuses on natural language and large, learn, uh, large, large language models, et cetera. And she applies it to many different areas of uh, uh, electronic medical records and so forth. Um, Ed Amram with the Amram Lab uh, is working on machine learning techniques to uh, try to predict when somebody who's in a coma might wake up by looking at different uh, brain waves and, and, and scans and medical records and so forth. So I would say that all, all three of these who will be offering uh, projects next year are dedicated to uh, applying uh, advanced machine learning techniques to uh, healthcare. And finally, I want to uh, just mention that uh, as you come in here, what you will notice is that, you know, there's a lot of coding and programming involved in many of these projects, and not all of you may have expertise in a language like Python. And so one thing that I like to do for the students that uh, join my projects, the projects that I've described, uh, or any project that I am either supervising or the faculty liaison for, is to offer you a free bootcamp, bootcamp course in Python that I call Python for Engineers. And this will uh, be about 10 hours. It's uh, over Zoom. It's completely optional. You don't have to do it, but it's just to sort of get you started on a good foot. Um, it will happen in mid, late September. And in this mini course, uh, I will help you to set up a nice environment uh, that will sort of see you through the whole uh, program using Conda, Jupyter Notebooks, or IDE, an IDE such as VS Code, or Colab, uh, or PyCharm. We'll go through all of this. Uh, so that uh, it, you, you uh, don't waste too much time uh, doing these sorts of things. You'll learn the basic elements of the language, such as its data type, syntax, program flow, et cetera. And I will get you started with the packages that will be crucial for your success in the uh, Capstone project. So uh, consider that. And um, as I said, uh, if you have any questions, I'll stick around, but uh, if you have any questions after, you just want to chat, uh, you're free to come uh, knock on my door at 5116 at Shaveri Hall. Okay. Can't hear you, Francesco, you're muted. Yeah, I was just trying to look for my mouse. Gabriel, thank you so much. Everybody, uh, uh, I mean, you have seen the uh, the breadth and depth of this project. It's impressive. Actually, I didn't know we had all this type of uh, kind of projects. And they, it's really, I think, the highlight here. You are in a mechanical engineering program, but you're well aware that mechanical engineering has evolved, right? This is not all gear uh, design. We are we have machine learning classes, artificial intelligence mixed with understanding of physics, and physics can be. Uh, uh, robotics, but can be body dynamics, can be flow, uh, heart flow, it could be interaction dynamics. So uh, thank you, Gabriel. Very exciting list of projects. Again, as you said, I would like to be able to take one of these, uh, be part of one of these projects. So looking at the time check here, we have 40 minutes, Isabel. Maybe I'll go back to my slides. I'll, I'll share a five minutes of additional uh, thoughts and uh, um, uh, on the program, and then I'll let Isabel uh, present the degree uh, requirements. Um, let me share my screen again. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I have a, sorry, I have two screens. My computer is low. You don't see my screen, right? Is that correct? No, not yet, Professor. Yeah, so let me, let me, uh, my computer froze, one second. Right. Okay, give me one. No, it's fine. Perfect, let me share my screen. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I 
I'll, I, I don't, I'm not going to go in the presentation mode to avoid any. But again, just to, just to, for uh, putting things in perspective, you just heard from, you only heard from three of the uh, concentration areas, control and robotics, that's Professor Gomez, you heard uh, on uh, MEMS, Nano, Professor Lin, like, and you heard from a, a Professor um, Gucci Lambert about product design. There's really- Can I say, Francesco, I'm yes. sorry, that I, I would also, uh, of course, take students who are in uh, simulation for the AI for traffic uh, and mechanics and dynamics uh, also, that's that's fine. perfect. This is an excellent point. Okay, so there are two things I want to point out. One, there are other six concentration areas, right? So the breadth uh, uh, of our program is impressive. I don't know of any other program that is uh, uh, that allows you to choose. There's all these options. Sometimes it might even confuse you because you can't decide. The other point I want to make, exactly, what Professor Gomez is saying, if you are in a concentration areas and you want to work on a project that is related. That's totally fine. And sometimes your advisor, as Professor Cummings say, will allow people from, uh, depending on the project, if you are mechanics and dynamics, it's totally fine to take a, 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 a capstone project in controls and robot autonomous systems um, and vice versa. Okay, You would be, you can uh, uh, do a, uh, you can do a project in biomechanics and be a control and robotics, uh, um, uh, um, take class in control and robotics specialization. So there is an uh, interchangeability between specialization areas and capstones projects. And it, this mostly depends on the project and your uh, main advisor. So I, uh, again, don't have much time left, but there are, in each one of these, you're gonna have the latest and greatest of uh, the uh, concentration areas. And so for instance, in uh, uh, biomechanics, uh, you're going to study John biomechanics as well as new techniques for modeling simulation uh, 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 tissue uh, 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 tissue mechanics. Okay, if you're uh, Gabriel already told you about control uh, a lot about control design and robotics. There is also there are a number of other projects which involve industrial manipulators as well as exoskeletons as well as uh, uh, drones. Okay, from uh, Professor Mueller, from Professor Srenet. Uh, we have a, 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 a strong concentration areas in energy science and technology, where you're going to study uh, new modeling and simulation tools for combustion engines, for uh, uh, rocket dynamics, uh, uh, as well as uh, take new techniques for nano manufacturing and, and flexible electronics manufacturing. Uh, again, I'm going to go very quickly. You heard about from MEMS and NANOS. There is also a, a, a lot of interest on the mechanics, fluids, and ocean side with studies on uh, dynamics of oil spills or uh, drag read models, uh, simulation models for ship drag read action, or experimental setup where you are going to study uh, different techniques for generating renewable energy from the ocean. Um, I, uh, I think this is, uh, uh, that's all that very quick overview of the concentration areas. Uh, before I leave, I want to flip, I want to switch to the, the appendix. What are you, uh, uh, what are you going to do next? Okay. Life after MNG. Um, I, I'll give you, I usually, instead of, I'll give you the big pictures. Okay. And the big picture is that there is a lot of opportunities in Silicon Valley, uh, because you're next to Silicon Valley, okay? There was a recent uh, um, uh, um, survey sent to the 25th biggest Silicon, uh, to the 25th companies in Silicon Valley in the last year, where they asked from which university you hired the most and University of California, Berkeley was ranked number one. Okay. And the list of, of these are this is the non-comprehensive list of companies that hired MNG students. Okay, uh, from Apple, you recognize all the the, the top companies. You know, uh, uh, both from uh, devices, consumer device to uh, in electric to robotic systems for um, uh, agriculture to energy systems. It's really to aerospace systems. 
Africa. So it's really a long list because of the areas where we are located because of the strength of our program. And just to give an example, I ran three capstone projects last year and uh, uh, only um, a, a one capstone project was a large capstone project, we were split in two. We had uh, uh, eight students, so two groups of four, okay? And I asked them, uh, what do they do now? Okay, so software leader Peter started up from Silicon, from San Francisco. Uh, one went to graduate studies to Georgia Tech. Another one is an autopilot software engineer at Tesla. Uh, another one is software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, another one was a, is a, a, um, a software development engineer at uh, Mercedes Benz. Product manager uh, at Plus.ai. And a startup in China, a software engineer that applied intuition in San Jose, and another graduate student, University of Wisconsin. So you can you see two graduate students out of eight, they want to continue studying. Uh, six out of eight, they landed very good jobs, uh, and five of them were in Silicon Valley. So again, now we have 15 minutes only. Uh, uh, Isabel, please uh, I'll stop sharing. Uh, if you can take over and tell us about the degree. Uh, requirements. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Borelli. Hi, everyone. I'm Isabel Blanco, and I'm your graduate student advisor for the MEng program. I'm going to go ahead and share my slide. And first of all, I just want to go through um, all of the areas of concentration that Professor Borelli went through. Um, you you should have on your application chosen one uh, of these Isabel, areas. Is that we're seeing your a very busy desktop? Oh, sorry. Um, let me go back. And let's see if I can. It's, sorry. I'm not going let me stop share and then try this again. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so these are the nine areas of concentration that Professor Borelli went through. On your application, you have you would have chosen one of them. Um, so for the degree requirements, you are required to complete 25 units. 12 units must be in the ME 200 level courses. Eight units are from the Fung Leadership courses. And then five units are your two semester capstone projects. All of the courses must be taken for a letter grade with a minimum grade of C minus or higher. But you must also complete, have a cumul cumulative GPA of 3.0. Next, I have a list of all of the courses scheduled for fall 2023. This list will also be on our webpage at me.berkeley.edu. You can also find the schedule of classes on classes.berkeley.edu. Um, and if you have any questions about your course curriculum for the fall, please send me an email. So these are just going over most of the courses that we have. Um, any updates to this course list, we'll let you know. Um, by sending out an updated course list. Um, under product design, as Professor Gaucher Lambert mentioned, he is offering human-centered design. Next, in addition to the 25 units of the um, degree requirements, you are required to take a leadership comprehensive exam and also the comprehensive technical oral exam. The Oral exam is um, based on the ME content of your capstone project. So you must also have two committee members as part of your oral exam. And if you choose a capstone project in another department, at least one ME faculty must be on your capstone, on your committee. Next, we also have the Berkeley MEng Tech Plus certificates. Um, this is in addition to the 25 units of the MEng degree requirements. Um, so the tech certificates, you would be taking six technical courses for the academic year. 
And you can find more information on the Fung Institute website. Next is just a few questions, um, FAQs that um, I think will answer some of the questions that we've already been asked. Um, the first one is, what if I have back-to-back -back classes? On Berkeley, the instructor starts 10 minutes after the scheduled start time to allow students to walk from one class to another. So if on your schedule, it says that the class starts at 11 a.m., the lecture actually starts at 11.10. Uh, second question, can I take a technical courses outside the ME department? Yes. Courses taken outside the ME department will not count towards your MH degree, but you can definitely take them. Um, you can take the business courses at the business school as long as that department allows students to be enrolled that are not in their major or the program. Another question is, can I be a GSI or TA or reader? Yes. However, because of the short length of the program and the heavy workload, we don't recommend students be GSIs or TAs or readers, but you're definitely eligible to do so. Um, can I change my area of concentration? Yes. You will need to let me know before you enroll in courses, which is normally in mid-July, then that a faculty advisor in your new area will um, review your MEng application and approve your transfer. Uh, next question, can I defer admission? Uh, yes, you can make a request to defer admission and the department will review it on a case by case basis. Um, the request should be based on extraordinary circumstances beyond your control. Um, we don't normally defer um, admission due to financial reasons or job opportunities, um, but you can definitely send me an email to make your request and then we'll review it. Uh, next question, can I extend the program to a third semester? Um, unfortunately, we don't accommodate requests for planned or voluntary program extensions. Um, students can extend a program to a third semester if they do not complete their degree requirements within the two semesters. Can I add the PhD program? Yes, this has actually been more common lately. Students um, after completing the MEng program can re request to continue to do research in the PhD program. Um, there is a process to do so. It's located on our website. Um, and actually, uh, Professor Borelli had one MEng student do so. And I think he's graduating this year or next yeah, year. Yeah, he's graduating, uh, Tommy uh, Zhang. And you'll be, and if you come to campus, uh, be, be happy to meet you if you have interest in understanding the process. Yeah. Right. And lastly, my contact information um, is miblanco at berkeley.edu. I am also in room 6189 in Echeverry Hall. And here are my Zoom office hours. If you're not available during these hours, please send me an email and we can schedule another time. Okay, and I think I answered all the questions that are currently on the Q&A. So if you have any more questions, um, please let us know um, in the Q&A, or you can also raise your hand and I will, um, and you can ask your question live. Okay, there's a raise hand here. Yes. Yun, Yun Zhou Li, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, Professor. I'm Yuan Zhuo Li, and I'm a prospective student concentrating on the control of robotics and the autonomous systems. Nice to and, meet you. And uh, I want to talk with uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Professor Borley. I'm very interested in, uh, in your uh, project and uh, in the MPC lab, such as the uh, data driving control, the model predictive control, as well as the uh, iterative learning. So um, after I browsing the list of the capstone project I, I i found that you you also hold a, a capstone project called autonomous ground vehicles for solar for farm cons, construction um uh, i want to know if, if it is related to the project that in your uh, mpc club and uh, um, if i do this pro capstone project with you can i learn something related to your uh, 
uh, current project in MPC lab. Okay, so it's a very, it's a long. I'll try to be short because you have a lot of time. But uh, there is a. I teach a class on MPC two thirty one A's. You can take that in the fall. And so that's where you're gonna learn the basic of the technique we use in my research lab. Then there is a research lab activities, okay? These are usually led by PhD students, okay? And then there are capstone projects related to the research lab activities. That's correct. We have a, this in the past year I had two projects, one on the solar rover, the other one on self-driving cars, which were related to the MPC lab activities. If you are, if you apply this in the next year, we have been this year because uh, been quite busy. We haven't posted our capstone project yet, but we'll have other capstone projects. The solar rover will not be there because if the project ended with the startup company, there will be new projects, and both projects will be related to MPC and will be related, will be closely related to my research lab activities. Now, do not re, uh, do not forget that you are not guaranteed. You apply for a project for, and there is a ranking, okay? And you will, uh, there's gonna be a matching process. And uh, if you are selected in one of my projects, I'll be very happy to uh, talk to you about the research that we do in the lab. Uh, I, I see, does it answer your uh, question, Yunza? Yunzo. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Isabel, I'm looking okay. at the time. I do have okay. a, a very, a very uh, a sharp meeting at 10. Uh, there are, oh, there's lots of, uh, uh, I think you can answer. I can answer those. Yeah, yeah let's see if there is one for me. But Professor okay. Blair, it seems a lot of them should end in softer position. Is it normal that accident to end up in softer position acknowledge the prior damage problem? So this is for Eleanor. Um, that, again, that was a, it was an example of my of one capstone project that I run, okay? And the software was control software. So in that case, because the, the concentration is control, there is, is, I wouldn't call it software, but it's control design, which requires software, okay? Of course, you're going to have other uh, 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 type of uh, projects and uh, company hiring, which are non-software based. However, as Professor Gomez mentioned, uh, the majority of Silicon Valley, any job that you will uh, uh, you'll be working on will have a software component, whether you're programming or using a software. And that's why Professor Gomez is offering this class on, on Python. So uh, this is uh, hopefully uh, that answered the uh, question. Um, okay. Thank All you, right, every, everybody. I will be there yes. in person uh, tomorrow if you can make it. If not, just uh, send us emails, Isabel, okay. or myself. You have my contact uh, on our website. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, Professor Borelli. Thank I'm you, actually going to stay for a few minutes to answer some more questions. Okay. Professor Gomez, can you also stay? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you, great. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Professor Borelli. Okay, um, Ivan had a question. I'm going to allow him to ask it live. Go ahead, Hi. Ivan. Hi, thank you. Uh, Ms. Blanco, I have a question to you. Um, sure. Um, you gave us some idea about the extracurricular courses, but could you uh, go in deep about like how many courses is it? Um, are we allowed to take? Is there a path to MBA? Uh, to addition to uh, MNG and also um, at affinity group some uh, students said that uh, some of the courses do not require you to come to the lectures and instead you can um, watch the recordings and there's pass no pass uh, grades for those could you elaborate sorry right. for many questions no problem. So uh, let me answer that question first. Um, so it really depends on the course. Some courses will record their lectures and don't require in-person um, interaction. Um, so that might be some of the like the business courses. I know they have some of them that are online and after um, in the evenings and sometimes on the weekends. Um, but for the ME 200 level technical courses, most of those will be in person unless they're specifically online courses. Um, so generally students can enroll up to 20.5 units per semester. That's the maximum, but we in no way recommend 
uh, students take up to 28.5 units. Um, MN students are required to enroll in a minimum of 12 units per semester. Um, and ideally, you want to take anywhere between 12 and 15 units because the workload is pretty heavy. Um, another question we have, Professor uh, Gomez, if you'd like to answer this, do you have any advice on preparing for capstone projects in general? Um, preparing for capstone projects, I, I don't have any advice. There, there's so much variation between the capstone projects. It would be difficult to give sort of some blanket uh, recommendation for that. Uh, I would say uh, once you choose your capstone project, you will very quickly start engaging with uh, the supervisor the, and the liaison for the project. And so ask them that question when, when time comes. Yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Let me know if it doesn't. OK, thank you. And we have another live question from um, Olawansei Afolian. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for this opportunity. I'm just um, curious. Um, I was just wondering if can can someone if I'm just um, very skilled at C and C plus plus programs, um, do I still need to program using Python? Uh, well, that's a great uh, preparation for Python. I think if you have experience in C and C plus plus, you should find uh, Python quite easy to learn. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I've done some of Python before, but I mostly use C and C++, so I'm just curious. Um, yeah, it. yeah, I, I think uh, you will find Python a breeze. Uh, yeah. One, because you don't have to deal with a lot of the, say, garbage collection and 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 uh, static typing and all of that that you have to do in C and C++. Thanks. Uh, Okay, um, I think there, does anyone have any other questions that they'd like to ask live? Yeah, I mean, I could. Um, oh yeah, go ahead. So I was just wondering, um, so just hypothetically speaking, if one wants to continue onto the PhD program based on how the MH program goes, um, I was just wondering how long is it gonna take to complete the PhD requirement? So the PhD requirement is normatively five years, but you can actually um, count some of your ME courses towards your PhD requirements. So that might actually shorten the length of your PhD program, depending on which courses you're going to use towards the PhD requirement. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Ivan, did you have another question? I can go ahead. Uh, well, it, it was actually the MBA program. Um, oh. Since uh, MH is only two semesters and MBA is two years, yeah. um, how do you, um, you know, go on uh, after MH? Do you, can you continue go on to studies? the MBA? Yes. Um, actually, that's not usually uh, how MNG students do it. There is an actually MBA MNG application um, where you would be admitted to the MBA program and then you would add the MNG program. But it's a separate application pool. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think I answered those. Did anyone else have a live question or anything in the q and I think I answered these. Okay, one more question. 
Okay, uh, the question is, if I have taken some graduate level courses like finite elements before, is it possible to transfer the credit to the MNG program? Unfortunately, we only allow students who have taken UC Berkeley courses to, um, to actually transfer up to two courses to the MNG program. So we don't accept courses from other universities, unfortunately. Okay, any more questions? Again, you can always contact me uh, via email or Professor Gomez um, at our email addresses. And if there are no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and close the session. Um, I don't see anything else. So thank you so much for everyone's time. Again, please let us know if you have any further questions. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.